Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. It's Doug. I'm back. I actually went to Japan and one of the things I went to do there was to meet my vocal coach and mentor, Phil Mafarage. And he actually lives in Japan and what I did was I took a bullet train from the city that I was staying in to go and see Phil in his city and we spent two days together. Now we actually recorded a song together, we also did a video and we did a lot of vocal training and I learned a lot in the short two days that I was there with him. Also when I was over there, Phil and I filmed a conversation together and that was actually regarding his vocal philosophies, his methods of teaching, and what he's actually trying to achieve as a vocal coach. And that's what the rest of this video is going to be, that conversation. A few takeaways that I got from meeting him in person is that I need to start embodying the voice, and what I mean by that is I really need to be more concerned with how my speaking voice is interacting with my singing voice because they are not separate. I realize that I really need to start practicing even more than I do now. I need to be singing more songs. I need to be more dedicated to what I'm showing my students. I basically need to step up my game. So, here's the video. I actually made a accompanying blog post, which you can get in the description of this video or on my website. And I really hope you enjoy this. I think there's a ton of value in it. And yep, just enjoy. You want to like label your whole, like grow the voice philosophy more around singing with ease. Yeah. And promoting that. Yeah, singing should be easy, for sure. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if singing's not easy, uh, I'd delete the take and I'd do it again. <laughs> so, like, when, when I was doing the... Remember I was on that last line of that song we did and I was really ripping into it? Mm. Uh, remember that part? The B4 part, part, section? Yep. I was trying to go all in on it, but then I started to lose that ease. And I lost yeah. it. It's that well, it was felt easy, but I was losing that that in the sound. So I went back to you know, but here uh, it didn't sound great, but it felt very easy. And then from that, I got back to the sound, and then it, it came out good. So um, yeah, so every, it's got to feel easy, even the powerful notes, even the high notes. Whoa! Still take effort, right? Yeah, then... yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, the body, the body is athletic defense. Singing, Singing is, is athletic. athletic. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, yeah. But it, it should, it should not feel uncomfortable. It, it should. At the end of the day, it should feel easy. Like you should be able to get on stage. Um, if the song is prepared and you're singing within what your current ability is, you should. Excuse me. You should be able to sing from start to finish and not feel like the notes coming up are gonna. Like, oh shit, uh, can I hit this? No, you, you shouldn't feel like that. Now, the only time you're going to feel like that is if either the song is just outside of your ability right now, um, even if your technique's good, if it's just outside of your ability, you might feel like that. Um, or, or if your technique's just off, huh. you know, or if you're not rehearsed for the song. But I, I just, like, you had me warming up this morning, it sounded rubbish, but I just made sure it was easy the whole time. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't e try. Even through the distortions and things like that, Yeah. you know that. If you pass through that sound, it's what's going to get you to where you need to be later on in the day. Yeah, I, I don't sacrifice the feeling to get a sound. If you sacrifice the feeling, the good feeling, and and get a sound that sounds cool but doesn't feel good, that's that's like an illegal move for me. So like if I'm recording, I'll go, ah, oh, I sounded pretty good, it didn't feel good. I just delete it anyway, you know, and I do it again. I do it until it priority one it feels really good, feels easy, and then. Then I, I try to make it sound as good as I can. Yeah, when I know you delete take, even if you know it fit like it sounds good. Yeah, you can hear it. Anyone would love it. Mm -hmm. But if you in feel that it wasn't easy, you know that it wasn't the right take for you because yeah. you you could feel the strain already. Yeah, when when I listen, I can actually feel it's not easy. And unfortunately, you gave yeah. me that when I listen to other singers and just other musicians in general because your ear becomes really developed. And you're able to hear every vocal restriction and things like that, and you know, it allows you to be a better teacher, allows you to be a better artist in general. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, some singers sound great, but the the way they're singing is not easy. They're singing, you know, in a difficult way, and it's the reason why that's important is because, like, I train a lot of singers that perform for a living, mm -hmm. and it's it's not enough for them to sound good. It has to 
friggin' feel good to them, otherwise they're gonna get on. It, it, it becomes depressing. So what happens yeah. is, the audience loves sounds that are hurting them. Yeah. yeah. They finish their show. They feel like every note was a struggle. Everything was hard, a battle. But the audience gives them the validation that it was good. So then it, all, it can put you almost in a depression yeah. because yeah. you feel like, is this really how it should feel? Like, is it? They're saying yeah. it's great. Is this really what greatness is? The answer is no. That's not what yeah. greatness is. Your dream job becomes like like pain, <laughs> like slavery. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like it does. It, like yeah. the, the, some of the people I train, they say like I I don't enjoy singing anymore because it's not easy. Yeah, yeah. You know when and when it does become easy when you like when we were in the studio today and I was like oh how did that feel that feel pretty easy and you're like yeah how much cooler does it feel when it's and sound and it sounds yeah, better yeah, yeah. it sounds better yeah absolutely usually. Another reason why I delete the takes when it sounds cool but it doesn't feel good is because I can still hear something's off in it. Okay. So th- th- even if other people can't, I-, I can hear it in my voice and so I know I'm like, no, no, yeah, it's got to feel easy. That's, um, I've been saying that all over the shop to everybody recently. Mm. You know, one, one thing that you kind of instilled in me when I started was that, like, me, I could only get through, like, I couldn't actually get through even one song. Because no, I couldn't wear a side either. You know, you go, you try, it, but you sing with so much. Because we're because we're doing sound, sounds that sound cool, yeah. but they're not performance. They're not realistic because you can't actually do them. You know, yeah. Another thing was that you, the fact that I realized, you know, when you realize that every singer isn't the same, you can't teach them in the same way, mm-hmm. and that um, everybody needs like different perspectives to, in order to learn to teach uh, to. To learn like the content that you're trying to share with them. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I thought it, it's just every, everyone like if they're searching on YouTube trying to look for an answer. Like the answers that come to them are generally you know one size fits all something like that. Whereas yeah, when so I like found it, your content, yeah, you know you shape it towards if you're singer A or singer B, you yeah. might be this type of singer who sings way too heavy when you do this. You might be this singer who constantly sings lighter and blah, blah, blah. you're able to tailor it to that but um and obviously it's been able to help me <laughs> every, every every um singer that you teach is obviously very different i thought it was very interesting how you got you you start to group them like you're like oh you're like this type of singer who you break at this certain note i think after a couple of years of you teaching you, you, you start to be able to like class different people and you knew different people's issues and things like that. Mm. And one thing I thought that was interesting that you told me this morning was that you actually like, a lot of the things that you teach are not things that you had to Yeah, to, to Yeah, like I, I saw somebody on the internet saying like, uh, oh, you know, teachers, teachers are kind of useless because they can only teach you, they can only teach you uh, what worked for them. Yeah. It's like, Sure, maybe bad teachers like that, but a good teacher isn't like that. A good teacher doesn't only teach you what worked for them because half the shit that I teach you is stuff I've never had to use or problems I didn't have or, or I just had different problems. So, no, a good, a good teacher is able to listen and feel what you need and then figure out how to get you to do the right sound and get you to do it easily. You know, so, yeah. The one thing I noticed since I like came to actually see you in Japan. I don't know if it's because you're just doing sing with me, um, like on Saturday and Sunday today, but the last couple of days, but um, it, it's almost like, I know you're a voice tutor, like that's your profession, but your your life actually revolves kind of around the voice because you constantly listen to music. And then, like you said, you constantly sing. Mm. And every time you can't sing because maybe you're resting or something like that, or you're on holiday, like you said, you have like maybe a week or something. It's not even like, good for you like you just love singing so much that like every day you wake up you start singing because didn't you say you said something to me yesterday where it was like the most important thing to you was just being able to sound good and was it was it your most fun thing to do or something like that my most fun thing to do is singing yeah, yeah. yeah. because like my most like i tell you what oh, singing well like yeah it, like it, like singing with ease basically yeah, yeah. so if, if, if it feels good if I'm singing and it feels good, it's not strained. I get in this flow state. I get into a meditative state. <laughs> I think singing is like almost like brings you present to the moment if you sing really well. Yeah, I yeah, go yeah. I go into the, a zone. Yeah. I could be stuck in traffic. I won't even notice. Like it's, I don't care. So no negative thought can yeah. even attack yeah, yeah, yeah. me. It's like if you're just sitting down, you might go, oh, you know, 
know, like you think about something bad that, that happened recently or like something, oh, I hope I can do this or whatever. But when I'm singing, all that shit goes away. I have no problems. Like there's no, the world is like fucking good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So singing is like, uh, I could sit down in the car here. One time I had to wait in the car for several hours <laughs> uh, somewhere. And I literally just sat and just sang. Yeah. And the yeah. time just went like that. Right. It's like so fast. So, but if singing doesn't feel good, obviously it's not going to be fun. So mm-hmm. yeah, so you got you got to find a teacher who can help you get it to feel good. Uh, yeah. Even powerful notes, even high notes, they still have to feel easy. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's singing is my most favorite thing. My whole <laughs> your my, whole life revolves around my it. speaking mm-hmm. voice. Everything yeah, I yeah. try to I, I center it around the the, vo- the, the singing voice. The, yeah the way I sleep as well. I make sure I sleep in a way that I don't get jaw tension yeah, and shit. Yeah. So I wake up, I take my mouth shut so that I don't slip my mouth open and get a dry throat. It's, yeah, yeah. my that, life is singing. That's <laughs> what I started to realize, like, um, I don't want to say the word, like, the real deal, but it's almost like, you're not just a vocal coach, like, oh yeah, yeah, I just teach. It's like, no, <laughs> your, your life revolves around it and then, like, you're constantly coming up with, like, new uh, techniques and things like that to teach. Yeah. And then I noticed, like, when you come across like some sort of um, newfound thing where you are able to unlock your voice, you, it seems like you're almost double excited because now you're able to teach it. Yeah. <laughs> you're able to like solve other people's issues as soon yeah. as you fix something in yourself. I'm, I'm able to demonstrate it better yeah. and, then, and then help them find it as well. It seems like I've done lessons with you for like say three and a half years, something like that, three years, something like that. Um, you've definitely changed as a teacher a lot. You used to be actually more of a teacher who would give scales, I think. Or, no, 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 you were always a, one who would give exercises because you knew that the whole point was to do them correctly, not just to do random scales. Yeah, I, I would say I just got better at, at diagnosing the yeah, problem yeah, straight, yeah. Off, straight yeah. off the bat. Without the just part. starting scales and things like that. And In the part, I was never a scale dude that ran people up scales. I was always listening to the sound. It's just now I can pick out, pinpoint if they're off so much quicker or so much better. Yeah, I feel like you get me through a few little steps, like maybe a few arpeggios, and then you're like, no, let's focus on that. Whereas uh, when I first started, maybe instead of being like that. Like I couldn't pinpoint bang, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it would take you maybe longer during my lessons, and then you would start breaking it down. Yeah. But then what happened as I continued doing lessons with you and we evolved, um, basically, yeah, you started stopping me a lot. Because I think you're trying to make me more and more precise, but it might also be because I became more advanced with vocals as well. I, I yeah. guess as as I started to realize how important the low range was, yeah. the low range is. So uh, in the past, I would have I would have heard problems, but I would have been like, oh, you know, there's there's little issues, but they're, they're fine. I'll let this guy go up a bit more. Whereas nowadays, I know better that no, that's why he's going to strengthen this note <laughs> because there's this little issue way back here. Yeah. So now, I, if I hear it's not right, I, I try to get them into the spot. But having said that, there is there is something to be said for momentum, meaning that um, uh, just like I was telling you yesterday, sometimes you got to peel one layer off at a time. So sometimes you can't get somebody in the in the 100% position. They got to be with their voice, but you can get them as close as they can get at this moment, and you just run with it. And then once they get comfortable with that, you show them the next thing. Otherwise, if you show them too much or tell them to do too much, sometimes they lose everything, and then you've got to like get them back into the spot again. So, you know, there is something to be said for less instruction. Sometimes, sometimes I say less. Like sometimes you ask me, you go, "Oh, should I do this?" I go, oh, I, "I don't want to say that yet. Just try it first, and we'll see what happens." Yeah. Fair enough. Because if I, if the singing's reflexive, so. I've got to give you an instruction, and then I'm hoping that your reaction will be the right, the natural reaction, rather than me trying to micromanage and manipulate every little thing. Otherwise, it's not natural for you anymore. Okay. You told me once that you you don't like with your vocal tutoring, you don't like go all out because you don't want to get burnt out by it. What do you mean? Uh, you work on it pretty consistently, obviously, but like you don't do like forty hours. <laughs> tutoring, tutoring oh, no. people. And stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to. Yeah. Then, like, uh, do you still see yourself doing it in five years' time? Vocal tuition. Oh, you mean teaching? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
10 years. Yeah, yeah. my whole life I'll do it. Yeah, actually, I know how bad is that. <laughs> Even me, was, like as a teacher too, I'm like, why wouldn't you, like, why wouldn't you be able to do this when you're 17? It's oh, it's bad. fun. I like yeah, it. I know. And not to say that you wouldn't want to retire, but it's like I've seen like all the old martial arts teachers being like, why it keeps my brain sharp, it keeps me doing this, and um, it's so bad too. Yeah, it's bad. I, I keep doing this. Yeah, you might do other things, but. Vocal tutoring is just something that you already established and you're able to do. It. There was a there was a guy who emailed me and uh, is ages ago. I can't remember what it was, what started it. Uh, it was something like I said. He was like he wanted to get all his free stuff off me, mm. and I said, you know, if you you got to you got to get my course to learn it, you know, to, to learn this shit. And he's like, oh, I can't afford it. Yeah. And then he's like getting angry at me. And he's like, oh, you know. You're, you're just a failed singer anyway <laughs> and it's like what do you mean though like like how am I a failed singer I, I still sing every day and I'm better than I was so yeah. how's that failed now nah, because people's like, perception of a singer is like, like, like he a thinks, wealth of well he, he thinks like I tried to get a career and then failed so that I became a teacher no no you said I, you I was fell in love with teaching <laughs> well yeah, I was building my voice and yeah. then I realised I could teach it so I started teaching it and then it's like I was, I was getting money doing something I liked, so yeah. I didn't feel the need to try to make a career out of singing because it's like, and you still the do whole, music. The reason, yeah, because I can still do music. The whole reason why I was trying to make a career out of singing was because I wanted to get money doing something I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. teaching I like too, so it's like, well, that's taken care of now. Now yeah. I can just do singing because I like singing, or yeah. do music because I like music. And you're, no, you're doing no pressure more, for anything. You're doing more music now than ever. Oh yeah, I yeah. Mar- you know, I pump it out. My, my marketing, double. my marketing is the music. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so I'm always trying to pump out songs, and, and I try to do them in one take and stuff like that. So that because that's my marketing. Uh, that's thing. a new thing. Yeah, yeah. The last um, say year, you've been trying to revolve around getting this um, approach where if a singer trains with you, they they will be able to sing live, sing what you record, not all this punch in stuff. And that became like a new thing because you wanted to get away <laughs> from the typical like, you know, oh yeah, you know, you can sound really good doing this technique, but you won't be able to do it live. That's sort of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for example, like some people they go like um, they'll they'll ask me a question and say, oh, you know, how do I sing like this guy or how do I do like this? And and I'll be like, um, I'll say like, well, you can do it that way, but you will struggle to pull that off live. Mm. Like it's it's some some you can do some sounds isolated yeah, yeah yeah that sound cool but they won't work live because the way you've got to come from the line to that line and then to the next line it will affect how you get there and you'll become rigid when you get the next line so you've got to do things that it so my whole thing was like make it as I'm singing in a way that's easy then I can sing through my whole song because um, I would train like singers right uh, like pro singers who do uh, wedding singing yeah, 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 and like yeah. people who do it for a living right they have to sing like like grandma's journey bon jovi all this shit in the original key <laughs> and they will i'll say you know show me sing me a line or something and i'll sing me a line and it will sound great but it's not easy for him and yeah. i know it's not easy i can go that wasn't easy was it and he's like no and i go it's no good if it sounds good because yes it sounds good in that one little line but because it doesn't feel easy you're going to not be able to sing that whole song and that song is high and if you mess up one little bit and it doesn't feel, it gets a bit rigid, you miss the next line. And then you miss the next line and then you start pushing and then it's like it snowballs. So it's, it has to be easy. Singing has to be easy. It's the only way to get a CD quality yeah. sound live in one take. Like those original songs I've been putting out, I've been trying to get as close to a CD quality sound live in a single go. And the only way I can get close to that is by making it be as easy as possible. Like when I sing, I, I, if I strain, I stop and I start it again. Then your vocal technique is like genreless. That's why you can teach people who sing in like so many different genres. It's oh wrong. yeah, genre, genre means nothing yeah. to technique because yeah, yeah. like it's um like people say like oh you know that doesn't work. Yeah, metal rock or genre. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. bullshit. Like if if I can make your singing easier and feel better, yeah, yeah. that works in any genre. You know. Yeah. yeah. So um. Just because I'll have it, you know, I'll have you do unfinished sounds that may not suit the site style you're going for, or whatever. Like unfinished sounds, but they're unfinished sounds to, to help you find freedom. Then once you've found that freedom, you then decide, okay, how am I going to sing this phrase and color the phrase 
in a way that I think sounds good, but where I don't lose that freedom I just had. And that's when you find that middle ground to, to the style. Yeah, yeah. Vocal technique separate, and then um, oh, you get that foundation, and then you add the style on top of that. So that's why I show a lot of the narrow vowels and stuff, because they help you find it, help you find that, um, that coordination. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's, style is it's easy. I mean, you just, you just copy the stuff you want to sound like, but you make sure you don't sacrifice your freedom to do that. And that's what everybody's doing. They sacrifice the freedom to get there. Or they, they uh, try to sound cool and hope that they will figure out how to make it free later. But you've got to start the other way around. Singing is my life because I'm always trying to speak in a way where it is the same thing that I'll do for singing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not just something you tack on, like, oh yeah, your speaking voice helps a bit. Yeah, yeah. it's like, no, no, no. It's fundamental, it's the, yeah. It's the voice. And I would say yeah. that's probably the one of the, when I train pro singers, that's like the biggest thing I work with them on because I'm trying to cut down their warm up times. Their warm up times would be way too long if they're, if they're like that, talking with all this tension, and then they go to sing, and then the voice is. You know, it affects me a lot if I speak wrong. Like yesterday, I was speaking wrong for about 20 minutes yeah. and it completely freaked, screwed up my G sharps and stuff. Yeah. And, and I, you know. <laughs> but we got it. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks so much for the interview. It's my pleasure, dude. Cheers. So that was my chat with Phil. It was so inspiring to meet him in person and just to know how passionate he is about The Voice and teaching his students and me as a student of his for close to four years now. I'm just really grateful that I met such a great tutor and I'm basically going to keep going and be able to share content with you. So enjoy it and I'll see you soon.